GTA San Andreas, a formative childhood experience that I believe every kid needs. My parents surprisingly didn't let me play this, but little did they know, I just played it at my neighbour's house. His parents were clearly way cooler than mine and less responsible. But hey, he's a painter and decorator now, and I make questionable jokes over video games. So in the end, we both turned out to be disappointments. Our protagonist Carl Johnson aka CJ is back in Los Santos for the first time in five years after his mum passed away so he's here to see the fam. The police are kind enough to give CJ a ride so he doesn't have to book one of those risky hood ubers. A hood uber is basically an uber but your life is in danger at all times. So if you're a woman it's the same as taking a regular uber. I have this iconic moment ruined for me. Ah oh, shit. Here we go again. Because I couldn't actually see CJ at this point. And no, that's not a racist joke. My screen brightness was just so low, it made the entirety of Los Santos look like I was wearing sunglasses at 3am. Being back in this BMX saddle again, it fills me with so much nostalgia. Literally no one BMXs anymore. It's so upsetting that the culture of skate parks and smoking your first dupe skin at 12 years old before whiteying behind the quarter pipe is dying. CJ returns to his family home and starts breaking down after seeing a picture of his mama because it's in the 90s and digital photos weren't really a thing. So this is probably the first time of him seeing his mum in five years. Sending unsolicited dick pics in the 90s was a real nightmare. I mean, yeah, you could fax it to her, but that would take a long time. You could mail it to her, but what if her dad goes through her mail, sees your dick pic and sends you one back? What's to play there? My boy Big Smoke then comes out the back room thinking CJ was an intruder, but the big man is 90% marijuana at this point, so he doesn't even know his toes from his fingers. I mean, we've all made mistakes while being high. Like when I thought having a shower would make me sober, but I just ended up standing still being really high in the shower. We nip down to the funeral and go visit the fam, where we meet CJ's brother Sweet, his sister, whose name I can't remember, fuck I'm so good at this job, and Ryder, the dude who never removes his sunnies. His mother is also here, but she's six feet under, so meeting her would be a slight inconvenience right now. Our rival gang, the Ballers, can't even give us appropriate grieving time, as they pull up straight after the funeral, blowing up the whip and forcing us to resort to be two wheel bandits. A bunch of grown men riding home on BMXs from a funeral really isn't a strong look for the Grove Street gang. But it's okay, I earn back a bit of respect for us by pulling off a fat 360 down the stair set, then hitting the bowl and doing a quick 270 foot jam while being shot at. We make it back to the ends because luckily the ballers have Star Trooper aim, and I'm not really sure if Ryder doesn't fully grasp the situation of what just happened, but he doesn't seem too traumatised by the events because he's casually pulling wheelies in his front garden like it was nothing. He also tells me that my trim and my fit are whack, so I proceed to strip into nothing but my boxers to assert dominance over Grove Street and hope the ballers give up their their territory at the mere sight of CJ's package. Me and Ryder then head out so I can get a brand new trim. I pop in the barbers to change my hair, but somehow just end up coming out with the same hairdo but more facial hair. We then both decide it's time for some food so we hop over to the local food joint and right as I'm about to bag myself some beautiful greasy goodness, Ryder decides this is the perfect time to rob the place. However, this is the hood, so the owner hits us with the Una reverse card. I mean, the boy just started blasting. He really wanted to smoke too. He even followed us outside just to try and get the job done. That was until this fellow citizen intervened and saved our lives with a perfectly executed bonnet bash on this little white boy. I hop out the car to thank my fellow neighbour and see if he would like a firm hand job in return, but clearly my dude is just having a bad day and has got some pent up anger because he whips out the Glock on me too. After those events, I take Ryder home and pay a visit to Big Smoke and Sweet, who are having a classic game of front yard basketball. You just know Big Smoke's the kind of guy to tell you he would have gone pro if he didn't fuck up his knee as a teenager. Anyway, it's time to really get serious about taking back the hood, so I roll up with a spray can and begin tagging over the baller's tags. They killed my mother, and I'm replying by ruining their artwork. This is really strong ground I'm holding here. I even give a couple of the boys severe long-term lung damage by choking them out with this spray can. It kind of actually becomes my signature move, because after all this tagging, we take out a dealer who's got most of the neighbourhood addicted, because nothing is more gangster than sobriety. I once again go for the spray can method, but after the cutscene, there's no body, just a pool of blood. I literally thought this was green spray paint, but now I'm learning it's far more deadly. So I decide that for the next gangbang activity, I'll retire the spray can and opt for the much less violent baseball bat. Look, I know this remaster is pretty disappointing, but I have to give it to Rockstar. The new lighting really helped up the quality of this crack den. Crack dens in the UK are filled with people trying to sell you 98 Honda car radios and bike locks. But over in the States, if you ignore the prosy ODing on the floor, this could be a beautiful two bed apartment with a spacious living room, which is always desirable. All of this recent gang business has got the boys hungry, so we all hop in the whip. 
and one of gaming's most iconic scenes plays out, only this time in HD. I'll have two number nines, a number nine large, a number six with extra dip, a number seven, two number 45s, one with cheese, and a large soap. Our rival gang, the Ballers, can't even give us five minutes to eat our food though, as they pull up right outside the drive through If I was ever engaged in a gang war, I would make it a priority to meet with other leaders of gangs and make sure that we put a food truce in place. No man should ever be shot at while he's trying to eat a double cheeseburger. However, these recent events have really got me thinking that CJ needs to get out of the hood. I take a look at a nearby property, and despite it being a steal for 10 grand, we're jobless and have $700 in the bank. It's also only like three streets away, so I'm not even sure if this counts as getting out of the hood. I mean, I'm a white British dude, I don't, I don't even know what a hood is. Anyway, in the middle of that epiphany, CJ's brother Sweet gives him a bell to insult his body, saying he needs to hit the gym because despite being African American, we need to leave the skinny body type in Africa. Now feeling suddenly self-conscious, we hit the gym and make the biggest power play you ever can when it's your first session. Bench the heaviest weight you can possibly find. Yes, there's a 1% chance this will work, and a 99% chance you will snap your wrists, cave your chest in, and slip multiple discs in your back but it's worth it for that 1%. Of course, CJ being the alpha male that he is, he only goes and pulls it off, the absolute mad lad. The entire gym fell to silence, came to a pause, and began a round of applause. Speaking of applause, fellas, have you ever noticed that when you ferociously slap your balls back and forth, it kind of sounds like a round of applause? I think next time I'm gathering in a crowd and we all have to clap for something, I'm just gonna do this instead. And when I inevitably get questioned about it, I will just say I have paralysis in both of my arms. So they look like the bad guy for even asking me and questioning my ball slapping applause technique. Gym session finished and no pictures taken for the gram because in the 90s, Instagram didn't exist. Back then people actually worked out because they wanted to not just to post it online in hopes of solving your own self-loathing with a quick dopamine boost thanks to the three likes your ad pick got. Sweet gives me a bell once again and insults me once again. And this time, it's about my fit. Apparently, I've got to rep Grow Street green colours, so I buy a green button-up, which is understated by this tasteful cowboy's hat I also pick up. I then go home and proceed to remove the button-up, but keep the cowboy hat on. The boys want to do a quick drive-by on some ballers, which I'm down for, because the only way to solve gang violence is with more gang violence. We even murder a couple of the purple boys right on the driveway of this property I was looking at. And if that's not fate, I don't know what is. A good hardworking day in the bag of making kids fatherless, it was time to get some kip and get ready for another big day tomorrow. I get awoken by Sweet and my sister having an argument because she's dating a Mexican dude that Sweet doesn't trust. To resolve this, Sweet gets me a lowrider, so I fit in with the Mexicans, which seems pretty racist, but on the bright side, I can go spy on her. This thing also has hydraulics, so I feel like fucking Eddie Guerrero making his entrance to claim the custody of Rey Mysterio's kid. WWE was wild back in the day, as if that was a real match they actually made. I was going to make a joke about how I'm betty's glad that Rey Mysterio won that match and not Eddie Guerrero because otherwise his dad would have been dead in a couple of years, but that's, that's where I draw the line. I can't make Eddie Guerrero jokes, that's too far. So I enter the low rider competition and a woman who probably has multiple STDs jumps in my front seat without even asking. Her balance, however, is incredible as I flick this bad boy side to side and prove I'm a real one. My sister then gives me a big hug so I grab a bit of ass because why not, and we get introduced to her boyfriend Caesar. Caesar is a chill dude, but his friends are all giving it the ese pendejo homes, which is Mexican behaviour for they don't like you. So once the cutscene is finished, I see one of Caesar's friends and decide to have a mature, adult conversation with him about why and how we can find common ground and get along with one another. When I get back to Grove Street, I'm blasting songs like Living the Vida Loca and calling everyone Ese because now I own a lowrider. CJ owning a lowrider wasn't the biggest surprise of today though. I find Ryder digging up his entire garden. He's either gotten really into the idea of being an anthophile, that's a difficult word to say, or he's lost his PCP. It is indeed the latter, so he can't get high, but that may be for the best as we have a home invasion to take care of. You see, I'm only speaking from the perspective of someone who has done a couple of home invasions, but taking PCP beforehand seems like it would significantly increase the chances of someone catching you sniffing their bed sheets, I mean, stealing their TVs. CJ waxed the leather gimp mask on, which apparently he just has laying around, so his sex life must be more interesting than mine. And I also respect the decision that he's kept that cowboy hat on. It stays on during sex, it stays on during home invasion, 
invasions, it stays on during heated political debates. He doesn't take it off. Now this mission I remember being enjoyable back in the day, but this being the de definitive edition, air quotes, of course it had to be broken. I couldn't actually pick up the guns that we were trying to rob, and when we would, CJ would take forever to do it and then kind of bug out, fall over and make loads of noise, so I failed this mission once and had to do it again. I was so annoyed I had a splitting headache because I had COVID at the time of recording this, I almost thought about quitting it, but I stayed in there, I committed, and even though I was sweating more than when I see my uncle at a family barbecue, I managed to pull through. And I thought this was going to be a big payday, maybe we can finally afford that new property, but we just put the van full of valuables in a storage container and I own respect, which is much less valuable than money. On the bright side though, I can now do burglaries at my own will, so that's great. I know this game is broken and it's not what people expected, but I'd love to play more if you guys would want to see more because it's still a great game at its core, or if you want to see any of the other definitive editions. I was also thinking about making a video on Skyrim because it's been 10 years since that game's come out. I've also been replaying Cyberpunk in my own time and it's actually quite enjoyable, so I was going to make a video on that for the one year, like in a, in a couple weeks. So yeah, just let me know what content you guys want to see, I'd love to know, and uh, yeah, I love you all. Thank you so much for all your support as always, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye. I would like to give a huge thank you to my motherload void boys and above, Gerardo Cruz, Bjorn van den Hatter, Xyphon Productions, and the Game of Tech. Thank you guys for your support.